Mm. How do you like the wine? Delicious. Mm. Very nice. This is a, a menage a trois aged in bur bourbon barrels, actually. You can really taste that. I can smell the oak. Mm. And Delicious. speaking of oak, hi, yes. class. Hello. Hi. Welcome to our Lita class. Uh, today we'll give a brief analysis on casks and bourbon or barrels. Mm -hmm. And we'll do the past, the present, and the future of oak casks. Yeah. So as Caitlin touched on, we are going to be talking about the history, the science of what goes into barrels, the assembly, the different sizes that the different sizes there are, the, the sustainability of oak, the future, what it has in store for oak barrels, and of course some fun facts along the way. So, so like anything, Caitlin, I think we have to start with history. Sure. Many few few people may know that cask aging dates back to the 7000 BC using clay pots that they used to create wine. Alcohol was fermented in large earthenware pots called dolias and the ancient Egyptians used a similar method but they were called amphorae's and they used that to transport and store their wine. And as the cask clay pot movement moved north into Europe transporting them became increasingly difficult as you might imagine with clay yeah definitely and the, the shape of these i mean you can't exactly stack or roll these uh, no these things absolutely not it's quite heavy and the wine funnily funnily enough was considered safer to drink than water because wine had more calories and it acted as a source of nutrients i'll drink to that yeah me too mm. Mm. So then uh, just touching more on the history here, we can start to see the evolution of the barrels here. Mm -hmm. uh, the Celts actually, more specifically the Gults. It was around 350 BC. They were already using these watertight barrel shaped wooden containers that could withstand stress and could be rolled and stacked. Yeah. So as you can see on uh, my left or your right, uh, the staves in place there, it has a nice round shape. Mm -hmm. And I believe they were uh, being held together by hazelnut saplings. Uh, this is a, just a photo of a Celtic drinking vessel there that just re represents or kind of looks like a barrel as well. Mm -hmm. that, that was a fun little touch. Yes. So, of course, the adoption of barrels was rapid. Uh, the military campaign, um, sorry, campaigns that Julius Caesar started in Gaul. It wrapped up in 50 BC. Mm -hmm. So by the early first century AD, the Romans had widely adopted these barrels. Yes. Yeah. So we'll just roll into the sign. So how do they work? As you can see here, I put a photo here. This is under a microscope of white oak. So the white oak has a uh, tylosis. So these are bubble like structures mm -hmm. in the heartwood that make the wood impenetrable to liquid or decay. So that keeps all the goodness in, keeps all the bad out. Mm -hmm. So the good congeners, um, mm -hmm. like our ethanols and alcohol, they're more stable, but the bad ones, like the, mm -hmm. the acetones, the ones we don't want in our beverages, mm -hmm. they break down by exposing the distillate to oxygen, mm -hmm. which will cause chemical reactions with those unwanted congeners. Yes. So again, this white oak, the, it's very porous and allows only small amounts of oxygen uh, to pass through and control the rate of congeners to oxidize. Mm -hmm. So aging a distilled product over time allows for the bad congeners to uh, decrease and those good alcohol congeners to increase. Yes, and I do like the uh, the picture right there. You can really see how the liquid would really get in. It's almost like a sponge. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Mm. So as you can see, this is a diagram of a, your typical barrel. To sum it up as quickly as I can, basically you've got your your mix in there. It mixes around with the barrel. Given the age and time, the wood's going to affect its flavor, its color. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, the any changes to the in the atmosphere, like humidity, effects from the sea, and the climate, is going to force liquid back into the barrel. And then any constituents, which is like the char mm -hmm. and tannins is also going to be carried back into the liquid the more time it spends in there. Mm -hmm. There's evaporation from of the water and the ethanol there. And of course, at the top is something called the angel's share. That is when a majority of the original liquid evaporates and goes up into the heavens. It's a, uh, it's a term used in the trade for when the, uh, for when the alcohol is just 
gone. Well, cheers to the angels. Indeed. <laughs> Mm. So let's just briefly look at how they're assembled and how casts are put together. Mm. Uh, we can see we have a diagram here. Uh, so starting at the beginning, we have our staves mm -hmm. and they will be hollowed out just a bit to create that nice round shape. Mm -hmm. um, we'll then toast, toast the hoops, mm. <laughs> the hoops, the hoops. Uh, in a rosing kind of stage. Mm -hmm. um, they will then be sent to the fire for their mm -hmm. roasting. Yes. Uh, into the brazier, yeah. uh, and then they will receive their steel cables to then keep them together. Yeah. Yes. And as we move on, yeah. on this side, we yes. have... We have uh, all the little uh, bits that goes in to help form together and form tightly. As you can see, the, from the steel cable, it's being uh, tying around it around the heat source. It makes the wood a lot more bendable mm. and helps form its shape. Then skipping by a little uh, baby little steps. Technical bits. Yeah, exactly. It, eventually, it becomes the whole barrel that we all know. Exactly. It's then sanded, and the toasting hoops are then replaced here as needed. Yes. Yeah, and then it's ready for market. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This just shows is the basic diagram of all the different kinds of barrels that are available. You probably didn't know that there were this many. I didn't. I sure didn't. <laughs> it goes from smallest to largest, as you can see. Uh, we've got some probably some very little known ones called the blood tub, for example. And then you've got the more famous ones. Quarter cask, American standard, hogshead, the port, the butt, and of course, the largest one being the puncheon, which is can hold up to 500 to 700 liters. Wow. Yeah. Big boy. Yes, it is. <laughs> so just to go into the sustainability of the oak casks and barrels, how long is this going to last? Are they sustainable in the future? Mm. So first off, we know, or we will know, that most barrels and casks are made from white oak. So American white oak tree species are currently occupied by more than 104 million acres of public and private uh, forest land across much of the eastern and central United States. So what are our challenges here? So shift in land management uh, and ecological changes, you know, we have irresponsible uh, foresting and mm -hmm. global warming, you know, the white oak trees, they're not being replaced by the younger white oak trees at a pace that will support, pardon me, support long-term sustainability. That's right. So the white oak abundance can be attributed to the past land use of disturbances. So those forest fires, those terrible forest fires, mm -hmm. um, and again, uh, irresponsible logging, um, they've created conditions where the white oak once thrived. Yes. Yes. Now, it's all, no, all not doom and gloom. There's a bit of hope here. Researchers are experimenting with different thinning treatments, such as removing smaller trees from the competition. So it's like grape pruning with thinning in vineyards. So they're just taking the smaller ones away from the big ones mm -hmm. to give them more of a chance. At about 60 years, they reach, uh, oak trees reach their young stage. These selected trees are taken and then spaced out into an even pattern they, that achieves optimal density that is close enough to the competition with each, o each other having a chance for light and water. Mm. It is a competition for sunlight that forces trees to grow straight. Mm. Now, one of the, com uh, one of the uh, companies that is overseeing that this happens is the White Oak Initiative. Mm. It is a diverse coalition of partners committed to long-term sustainability of Americans' white oak forests, as well as economic, social, and environmental benefits they provide. Oh, good. Yes. Somebody's looking out for the trees. Absolutely. <laughs> so, bourbon, so a bourbon cask is used for about two to four years in the U.S., and they can be used for another 30 years in Scotland. And after the man remanufacturing called rejuvenation, the cask can then be used for about 30 or 40 years after that. Makers Mark Bourbon sends somewhere nearly 16,000 of their used barrels annually to the Lafroy Distillery in Port Ellen, 
and in Scotland, where they use a fully, where they use to fully age their one of a kind ten year old Lafroy, mm. and of course barrels do serve other purposes outside. A lot of them do get turned into mulch, mm. furniture, planters, and other things. They don't just get thrown aside. Mm -hmm. That's great. Actually, we're enjoying uh, some wine today. Yes. Uh, we have a menage a trois, uh, aged for three months in bourbon barrels. Yes. So to give it that was nice, yes. oaky, caramelly, sweet yes. finish. Yes. We and also have um, a Robert Mangalvi. Mm -hmm. This is a private selection and it is aged in rum barrels. Mm -hmm. Delicious. So we maybe we'll open that one later. Yes. <laughs> and as you can see, we got a bit on the... Uh, the harsher stuff here, a bit of Woodford, Rever Woodford Rever Reserve Double Oat. If you have not tried this, believe me, it's worth it. It's worth the price. <laughs> it's hard to come by that with the LCBO. There, so yes. Keep your eye out for yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Which leads us into the future. So Caitlin. the future, yes. If you haven't seen this before, this is a completely amazing, uh, innovative way to age your spirits. This yes. is called the Squirrel. Sorry, not squirrel, squirrel. Yes. <laughs> so squirrels are customizable, they're more efficient, and they minimize the wood waste, but they also last longer than your traditional barrels. So if you see in the photo, we have a stainless steel cage or bones, uh, which then you can insert your wood staves um, as your, whichever staves you choose. Um, so you keep the frame and you just replace the staves as needed. Yeah. Uh, so squirrels, link the benefits of wood with the benefit of the stainless steel, yeah. all while providing an environment equivalent to your traditional barrels. Yeah. And a little known fact actually, not too many, I don't know how people, many people may know this, is that the, uh, the wood on the inside, which they are using to, for their squirrel, is the, serves the sole purpose of aging. And it, the barrels up to this point, uh, if you've ever seen them, the wood on the outside serves no purpose whatsoever. Hmm. It's wow. purely decorative. Wow. It has no effect on the aging process whatsoever. It's aesthetics, I see. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, so now we're going to take you into a little video just mm -hmm. to explain further about the squirrel barrel. Yeah. The barrel hasn't changed for over 2,000 years. One oak tree only has enough wood for two to five traditional barrels, and only 30% of that barrel is used for flavor. We know that isn't fair to the trees, or your business. Why pay for oak that isn't needed? At Squirrel, we've reevaluated how we use oak trees, so the wood in our barrels is used exactly where it's most needed, for flavor. Each Squirrel barrel is a reusable stainless steel frame with 12 oak stave inserts. The frame stays with you, so only the staves are replaced for each new batch. Plus, every stave is sustainably sourced from traditional barrel byproduct, and our staves are slotted, accelerating the aging process, allowing you to bottle and sell your spirit more quickly. With Squirrel, you pull more flavor more quickly from less wood. Place your order today. It's a very interesting product, isn't it? Definitely. Great way to save the trees. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, when I first came across this, it's like, what is this? I've never heard of this thing before. This is <laughs> this is odd. But once you start looking at it, it's, it's really exciting. It really is. It's definitely going to be the future. If uh, we choose. If you choose. I mean, it could take some time to change people's minds considering sure. barrels and aging has been the way it is for mm -hmm. so long. Definitely. Yeah. So now a bit of fun facts. Did you know? So, Jack Daniels and Woodford Reserve uh, and Old Forester are the only major distilled spirit companies in the U.S. that produce their own barrels. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, if not too many people know, the demand is for scotch alone is soaring. A number of whiskey fanatics are buying entire casks for $1.6 million. Wow. Yeah. So using the U.S. Forest Service data, the council has also found that American white oak growth, it actually exceeds harvest in all major supplying states. That's right. Wow. Yeah. And talking about the white oak, um, did you know? It takes <laughs> 1.57 seconds to grow 
one meter cubed of American white mm -hmm. oak, that rapid rate of replacement is due to the very large volume of hardwood trees in the U.S. Yes, and uh, exports hit a record of 4.37 million pounds or 7.2, 7.29 billion dollars, which equals to 1.23 billion bottles. Wow. Tangible assets like the, like casks are seen as a safe haven against economic uncertainty, which is a very good sign for the industry. It shows that casks are appreciating its natural maturation and appreciating in response to the demand outpacing supply. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know. No. <laughs> so class, our discussion for you, our discussion for us. So what do you think of the squirrels? Do you think the squirrels will become the future of casks and barrels? Yeah. Will the industry be open to this new technique of constructing casks and barrels? Yeah. And in your opinion, what does the future look, pardon me, the future of cask making look to you? Yes. And finally, is the future of cask making sustainable or should we, ha or do we have to change the game? That's the question. Let us know. Thanks for watching. And now to enjoy hey. a Woodford Reserve double oaked. Cheers, Ryan. Cheers, Caitlin. Mmm. Mmm. So good. Wow, that's delicious. Delicious.